responsive to their bottom line. They need to get return on their investment. And if they don't, or if they're not concerned with that, another stakeholder that um, is more concerned with their bottom line will have more funding in the next quarter to be able to invest. So the system is not going to be responsive to long-term long -term needs. And a lot of these things, sustainability isn't, doesn't work on a five-year scale. It works on a much longer scale. The second uh, issue uh, that I want to talk about is uh, negative market externalities, which I already mentioned a little bit, um, related to global climate change. Um, global climate change is an externality of oil production um, and consumption because it isn't, it isn't part of the price that you pay at the pump or anywhere else. Um, the companies don't have to pay for it. We don't have a pay, pay for pollute system and there's problems with those systems anyway. Um, it is something that we bear um, now and in the future, um, but isn't reflected in the cost. It's just like, as an example I just uh, said a minute ago, of, uh, of fast food. Fast food is cheap food, but it's only cheap when you don't think about the long-term health effects um, and, the, and the displacement of, of localized farmers, etc., that um, are related with it. Um, and then finally, um, internal or technological growth. So we have a system based on growth. We, we have to have our markets expanding continually. We have to more and we have to have markets to, to sell those goods for. So we need to have more and more middle class people to sell, sell these goods for, to and uh, we need to have uh, increased production at all times. Well, when we, when we come to a planet that has 7 billion people, it becomes harder to find actual places to develop more markets and it becomes um, harder to find actual resources to keep um, expanding into commodities. So what you get is internal uh, internal or technological developments. You have this focus on how much of uh, one product you can grow in a square acre, uh, trying to increase the efficiencies of the system. Um, and, and they'll do this without any sort of recognition of, of what's important in terms of, of quantity. Um, but uh, um, so, the, so the internal development related, or I'm sorry, the uh, internal growth related to peak oil has to do with um, um, uh, the attempts that we see all the time now, and maybe I'll end with this, uh, but I, have, I guess I have a few uh, take home notes. Um, uh, it's uh, almost four. Okay. Uh, the, so the, so uh, um, related to peak oil, uh, the internal, the uh, internal extra, the internal. One second. I'm sorry, I'm trying to go too fast. Um, the internal growth uh, is related to making uh, the system more efficient. So you see, like hybrid cars, um, or an example of that where people are like, okay, I am being more fuel efficient. Uh, uh, energy user. Well, um, according to Jevons law, first of all, uh, when, uh, when, a, when, a, when a commodity becomes more efficient to produce um, uh, or to, to uh, consume, it doesn't lead to decreased consumption, it actually leads to increased in some consumption. So if we all read hybrid cars, we would just drive more and we would just ship food further off. So um, those systems aren't going to, to, to uh, solve the problem. But in terms of peak oil, um, a good analogy is the cod fisheries, fisheries uh, and their collapse in uh, eastern Canada in the 90s. Uh, there, it wasn't the case that all of a sudden there was dwindling supplies um, and this kept going down over time. Rather, um, there came a day when all of a sudden there was no more, the cod fisheries had just collapsed. Um, and this is largely probably going to be the case with peak oil. We see ways that they'll find uh, less safe, um, ways to extract the oil more and more until we have nothing left um, and then all of a sudden it'll be gone. That's why we see uh, hydro fracking and that's why we see uh, the tar sands, uh, all, all the tar, stand, tar sands uh, movements now, uh, offshore drilling, etc. So uh, my three take home points um, are one, uh, do not adopt the collapse fetish. Um, a collapse of the uh, system is not going to be good for anybody. Instead, we need to recognize that these things are a problem and, and explain um, and have a dialogue about how uh, economic issues are also environmental issues and vice versa and, uh, and make people recognize that these changes are needed um, so we can internalize these externalities and, and the other things I've said, look more long term, look more, uh, into more sustainable to avoid collapse. Collapse is not good for anybody. Second of all, uh, zero growth, I didn't get a chance to talk about this too much, but zero growth capitalism is oxymoronic. Uh, 
capitalism is a system based on growth. So whenever environmentalists talk to the point of zero growth, uh, we, need, we need, or anybody says, you know, we need to work towards a zero growth um, economy, um, ask them how, what, that, what that is and if that can be countenanced in terms of a, a market-based solution, um, if green development uh, itself isn't oxymoronic. And then finally, um, there aren't any magic bullets. There's not any magic way out of this, uh, this issue. So uh, geoengineering, etc. Uh, don't close off any issues or be uh, dogmatic in rejecting uh, technological or scientific-based um, assistance, but none of, these, none of these solutions are gonna solve global climate change or anything else. The only thing that can solve it is people coming together to recognize where the problem is and that uh, 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 a, a, social, a, a socially uh, attuned um, government and economy is the only thing that can get us out of the environmental problems we we face and all other problems, most other problems besides. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a weighted stack. You said you wanted people to, you know, give you feedback and their own thoughts. So um, I know you were here first, uh, Chuck. I want to give you an opportunity first to go, and anyone else, I'll put you down next. And if you're, it's okay with you. I don't want to respond to each question right, right away. I don't want to have everybody go. That's preferred because I want to leave talk, soon. Because I, I talked way too much. Um, my, uh, my impression is that I mean, just listening to everything, and I'm familiar with some of the, you know, some of the things you talked about. It's just so dismal. You know? uh, it's kind of dismal for the future. And, uh, critical. Uh, my, my one fear is, uh, I mean, I've you know, lived for a long years. My, my fear is that, that, that the human experiment might you know, fail. I think that's why we're here, though. I have to buy it. I have to try to stop it. John? Um, uh, to go on what he just said, uh, one part, and I don't know if you already discussed this, that really scares me about this entire process is the militarization of these corporations. So Monsanto purchased Blackwater. And the inherent evil in what this is going on, this is not just pure capitalism. It's actually much more profitable to use greener, more renewable energy sources uh, that are much cheaper and will actually create more profit if you used hemp oil, if you used hemp for plastics and other kind of products. So to me, and this is what we really, like, I really want to internalize in everyone here, there is an urgency and an evil in what's going on. This is no accident. These are not mistakes. They have specifically selected to, to literally run society into the ground so that they can enslave people. And I think that that needs to be in every part of this conversation because there's an urgency that we need to physically impose. We need to stop these people from doing what they're doing because there's going to be a point when they know they need, like they only bought Blackwater because there's going to be a point when they commodify every seed and they have these one year seeds that people will physically going to fight for food and they're going to have guns to kill those people. And I don't think that that is really in the minds of the population right now. And even you look at oil, the war for oil, that is going to be a war in the streets with us for our food. Like what's going on in Iraq is going to go on in every city, everywhere. There's been wheat riots. There's been food riots before just for futures and commodities traders manipulating the prices. Now they're actually manipulating the seeds that grow the supply. So this is much more urgent than I think that most people are willing to accept. And it's much more just purely evil. It's evil that needs to be stopped. And it's going to have to be physically because they have created a situation where it is legal for them to do what they do. It is encouraged. And in the minds of people out there, they have associated cars and the use of oil and plastics, the overuse of plastics uh, with our identities. Um, and it's a very, very difficult separation to make. And once that separation is made, then there's a gun to your head. And I think that I don't, people really need to start dealing with the reality of beyond this, that we need to literally fight against this, not just, you know, like these, these, these educational things are great, but that this education needs to spread and spread quickly and lead to resistance because that is the only solution I see uh, for the infrastructure they've set up to perpetuate these ideas and this consumption. And I also wanted to say that, like, we're, we live on an oil standard, so it's not just the consumption of oil, it actually is related to our economy. And there is no way we can separate the consumption of oil from American life. That's what you, you quoted, um, you know, Bush and Cheney, that like it literally would destroy our economy to make that separation. So it's, it's, a, it's a parasitic relationship and it's going to hurt. 
it's going to hurt all of us. And I think that the reason that why even people who are awake aren't willing to separate themselves is because of how much it's going to hurt. Because of how like it, 